Good day to you. God bless you, Say, Welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel. Welcome to this family Bible study hour. Uh, Isaiah chapter 29, we're going to pick it up with verse 22 here in a moment. Our, our Father's Word, how fantastic it is. He has just taken us in this 29th chapter to Jerusalem, and he, he used the play on the word Ariel in the Hebrew tongue, which means the lion of God, or it can mean the hearth of God, meaning the altar of God where he burns things. And, and it's talking about restitution. And he brings us all the way through, uh, even up to the millennium, in verses 20 through 21, or I should say 18 through 21. And we're going to pick it up with 22 when he's proud again of the children of Israel. That is to say those that remain. Why? Because they're serving God. So with that having been said, a word of wisdom from our Father, let's pick it up there with the 22nd verse of Isaiah 29. And it reads, Therefore thus saith the Lord, who redeemed Abraham concerning the house of Jacob. And that, that covers all the natural 12 tribes, both houses, the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Jacob shall not now be ashamed, neither shall his face now wax pale. In other words, picture him standing around his children. What would he think of them today? Well, with the deception, false teaching, and everything else that's going around, he would be very embarrassed. But what God is saying, I'm going to get it together. I'm going to straighten them out. And he's not going to be embarrassed to stand in the middle of them. 23, as he continues, but when he seeth his children, the work of mine hands, that's Almighty God speaking, in the midst of him, they shall sanctify my name and sanctify the Holy One of Jacob and shall fear the God of Israel, and certainly not the false Messiah. At that time, they're going to love the Father. Why? On the first day of the millennium, every knee, not only Israel, but every knee bows to Almighty God. They can't help themselves with His presence. 24, they also that erred in spirit shall come to understanding, and they that murmured shall learn doctrine. They're going to learn the truth, and hopefully they will accept the truth. But it's still up to them. It is still a thing of choice whether you serve God or serve Satan. But uh, during the millennium, and it's important that you pick up on that verse because it, it means exactly that. Everybody's going to have an opportunity to learn the real truth in the millennium. In other words, they're going to have the facts to make their decision on as to whether they want to go to heaven or whether they want to go to hell. Let's just tell it like it is. Chapter 30, verse 1, and we have another woe chapter here. Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that's the stubborn ones, that take counsel or they ask advice, but not of me. And that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. And of course, you can't help but think of Ezekiel chapter 13, verse 20, when you read that, where, whereby God would say in Ezekiel, woe to the daughters that sow the coverings over my saving arms and teach people to fly to save their souls, which is a false teaching in, in chapter 13 of the great book of Ezekiel. And our Father does not like His truth to be hid. He said, they, they want counsel, they want advice, but they never get around to asking me. And you know, people will today, they will seek direction, and here they have the whole Word of God, which has counsel for everything. Even down, as you noticed in a chapter recently, crop rotation, how to be successful in farming. Uh, our, and you know, today they say, well, you should rotate crops. It's a new thing. There's not, nothing new about it. You're not only supposed to rotate, but you're supposed to every seventh year leave uh, that one portion out so that it can heal itself and refresh itself. Our Father's advice is permanent. 
There is nothing new under the sun. And if you will simply read his letter and of advice, his advice has, covers every faction of your life. But he says, they won't, they won't ask about me. They ask people. I wonder how many people have preachers that they would rather take their advice than they would the Word of God. Uh, you know, preachers are human beings. Teachers are human beings. You shouldn't take this teacher or any teacher's word without checking them out in the Word of God because your Father's Word is supreme and you should never, ever leave God out of the equation of your life. Verse 2, that walk to go down into Egypt and have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. They're, they're willing to go down there and take comfort from Egypt. But what about the Lord God Almighty? You know, if your family is blessed for, by him, for him, from him, if your advice comes from him, you're going to be successful. And your family is going to have peace of mind. But if you go traipsing off away from God, and in this case, even away from the Holy Land, away from Ariel, uh, the, from the prior chapter, and going down to Pharaoh, who held them prisoners for years and years, and there our father is, and there our father says, they really, they, they ask for advice, but not from me. Verse 3, therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame. Well, he's, man's going to always let you down. And the trust in and the trust in the shadow of Egypt, your confusion. That's what's going to mess you up. Confusion is Babel, if you would. And that, that's what you're going to go into. If you try to lean on man, he will always let you down. Will always fail you. God sent you this letter to guide you, to direct, to direct you, and to give you advice. And do you know something? He strengthens those that believe. Where you're a can-do type person, you can cut it. You can get it done. Just put your mind to it and your back. And you will be successful. But don't leave God out of the equation. Verse 4. For his princes were at Zoan, that's the place of departure, and his ambassadors came to Hanes, and so it is, and it was a place of departure, all right. And verse, you're, you're a little bit south of Memphis here in Egypt, okay, five. They were all ashamed of a people that could not profit them, nor be any, be an help, nor profit, but a shame and also a reproach. In other words, um, they, they traipse down to a people that couldn't help them one iota. And do you know what they took with them? Verse 6. The burden of the beast of the south into the land of the trouble and anguish. From whence came the young and old lion, the viper and fiery flying serpent. They will carry their riches upon the shoulders of young asses and their treasures upon the bunches of camels to a people that shall not profit them. They're taking all kinds of gifts down there, loaded with everything they have to try to buy protection. There's not going to be any protection in it. You cannot buy friends. You can buy mercenaries that will stay with you as long as the gift lasts. And then they're gone. But you can't buy friends. Friends are forever. God is the best friend you'll ever have. He's your father. He will never leave thee. He will never forsake thee. But you cannot buy friends. You know, it's amazing to me how many times people would give huge gifts to man when they really want the counsel of God. 
they really want God's advice. And do you know something? If you'll get in and dig it out yourself, it's free. You don't have to give God a gift other than your heart, your love, for that's what he wants. And he will see that you succeed. But you can't buy friends in Egypt always. Let Israel down. Okay, verse 7. For the Egyptians shall help in vain. Vain is emptiness. And to no purpose. Therefore have I cried concerning this. Their strength is to sit still. This is old Rahab dragon do nothing. That's what he is right there on the Nile. Just never, do, it just sits there, never does nothing. That, that, that's, that'd be a great bit, bit of help, would it not? No strength, no help, nothing coming from old dragon do, uh, uh, do nothing. Verse 8. Now go. Write it before them in a table and note it in a book that it may be for the time to come forever and ever, for the latter days, so you don't forget it. This happens to be the book. It is written, and if you want advice, you go to your father. Don't go to man. Don't go somewhere there and somewhere, somewhere else. Go to your father and take his advice. It is written. It shall come to pass as it is written. Verse 9, that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord. The law of the Lord is the word of God, you know, and, and, um, and there are many that would say, well, you don't understand, brother, the law is done away with. Because, you know, you'd be surprised how many pastors don't know the difference between law and blood ordinances. But ordinances were done away with. The law did not, was not. The law still very much remains and is in effect. And if someone tells you that it, it has changed or it is, there's nothing new under the sun. God is the same yesterday. He is today and he will be forever. So don't you let some man puff you up and make you think that God has changed anything because God is always with us. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. And his law is what keeps you out of trouble and brings you blessings when you do your best. We all fall short of it sometimes. But on repentance, we're back in his blessings and success. Verse 10, which say to the seers, See not, that's to say to the, the prophets, don't see. And to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceits. Just, just, just don't tell us the truth that could be a little painful. Just say anything that's soothing over. And, you know, you'd be surprised how many people might say, don't worry. You don't have to worry about the tribulation. You're not going to be here. Even though God's word declares that you will be here. Why? Because he has a duty for you, a purpose during the tribulation of the Antichrist to stand against him, whereby the Holy Spirit can speak through you. But they don't want to hear that. They would rather you just said, just fly us away. Let us be gone. We don't want any part of it. Just, just say soothing things where we don't have to do anything like old Rahab the dragon, do nothing. Do nothing for us. Just float us out. That's not what the scriptures say. What does the gospel armor say in Ephesians chapter 6? What do you put it on for? To run? No, you put the gospel armor on to stand against the fiery darts of Satan. He's our enemy. And you are to allow the Holy Spirit to speak through you as it's written in Mark 13, whereby God's children, your brothers and sisters, can hear the truth. And old dragon do nothing goes in the abyss, the pit, placed there by none other than Michael himself. It's going to happen. And it's, you know, you're in the generation of the fig tree. 
and you need to really pay attention. Now, you want to be careful of people that say, don't, don't prophesy something, just, just give us soothsayers. That's bad, bad. You need the truth. You know, man only fears the unknown. And when you know the truth, you always accept it and figure a way around it, over through it, or whatever. But to handle it. That's the way God's children are. There's, in, in the first place, God is not angry at us. He protects us. He takes care of us. He's only angry at the enemy. Verse 11. Uh, to, to continue. And it reads, get you out of the way. Um, you, the way is supposed to be Christ. You got it? Turn aside out of the path. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. We can't handle it. Well, I, I would, then who, who, what is left? Satan, Antichrist, the false path, the false way. You know, and, and you know, the real sad part is the soothsayers make this so religious to lead you astray. It just really sounds like the right thing to do, to be led astray. Verse 12, Wherefore, thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because ye despise this word and trust in oppression, that's to say fraud, and perversiveness, and stay their own because that's what you want and that's what you prefer. You prefer to be frauded rather than to hear the truth. Verse 13, Therefore, this iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall, swelling out in a high wall whose breaking cometh suddenly at an instant. In other words, this is a wall that is pooching out and all of a sudden it just explodes. Now, you know, God's playing with you just a little bit here. You know why? Because what is supposed to be your wall? God is supposed to be your wall. And what God is assuring you, if you take some wall other than him to stand behind, it's going to crush you. It's not going to stand. But as long as God is your wall, you can document that in Ezekiel 38 and 39, that God is our wall and you better be behind him. You better be with him. You better be where he wants you to be. Well, how do I know? From his word, of course. I, I think any child could read this chapter and know you don't want to follow those people that teach that or that follow that. You want the real thing. Even if, even if uh, you know, the little book that he partook of was sweet in his mouth, but bitter to his tummy. Hey, truth sometimes stings a little bit, but hey, we can cut it. Truth is always better. Why? Because with that comes tough love and correction. And that's what it takes in this world. Okay. So, uh, our Father is ever, ever so very good to us that um, you want to be behind that wall. It will never let you down. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. But if you let someone cover over, as verse 1 declared, the real truth and stand in the shadow of man's lies, it's going to crush you. Okay? It'll build and build until finally it will take you down. Verse 14. And he shall break it as the breaking of a potter's vessel that is broken in pieces. He shall not spare, so that there shall not be found in the bursting of it a sherd. You know what a pot sherd is? This is a little giddy piece of prop, uh, pottery. You won't be able to find a sherd to take fire from the hearth or to take water with all out of the pit. You're not going to have a piece big enough to even use for anything of pottery. He's going to bust everything you got. That takes you right down to the pit, my friend. And, and you know something? It doesn't take a very bright person to know that if you listen to lies and falsehood, and that you would rather hear lies and falsehood rather than you would the truth, 
of God's actual plan of what God intends that man do to prosper, if you would prefer to go the opposite way away from Christ, then you got it coming. And, and I think anyone fair mind, with a fair mind would agree that, you, hey, if that's what you want, then be happy, okay? But uh, it will let you down. It will fail you when all the time you had a loving father that owns everything and you went astray. What a shame. What a terrible shame to not go to God and ask him for help, to go to him and share your love with him and be blessed instead of cursed. Just doesn't make sense to me. I'll take his love every day. I'll take his truth every day and stand against that enemy. Verse 15, For thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, In returning and rest shall you be saved in quietness and in confidence, that's to say trust, shall be your strength and you would not. You wouldn't have any part of it. Didn't want anything to do with the truth. And you know, you can try to share truth with some people and you'll find out the hard way. They don't want any part of it. They'd rather be snowed. They'd rather listen to fairy tales. They'd rather listen to traditions of men that cover over the real truth of God's plan concerning the end times. And with that and within that, we have misleading and we have people that fall. But at the same time, we have people that listen to our Father and are blessed. I trust that you're one of them. Verse 16. I'm having no part of it, but what did they say? 16, but you say, no, for we will flee upon horses. Therefore shall you flee, and we will ride upon the swift. Therefore shall they that pursue you be swift. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fix your wagon however you decide to go, friend. That's what our Father's telling them. Verse 17, one thousand shall flee at the rebuke of one, and the rebuke of five shall you at the rebuke of five shall you flee, till you be left as a beacon upon a top of a mountain and as an ensign on a hill. In other words, what this is saying, all you're going to be is an old tree up there, like a, a an Oklahoma cyclone or tornado hit it, stripped every branch, every leaf. It's just an old bare tree hanging up on that hill as a sign. I ain't got nothing left. It's all gone, ripped off, and that's a beacon of warning that you don't follow God. That's what happens to you. You got nothing. Nothing there for you. And I would much rather be a beacon with the light of Jesus Christ, of salvation, letting that light shine, than to be that old dead tree, stripped bare, just like the locust army had just stripped her right down clean of bark. As a beacon and a sign, don't follow God and this is what can happen to you. You know, um, what a hard way to go to not, to not listen to our Heavenly Father. And uh, so it is. What to, you know, this is really the shipwreck of life. And that's why, that's why kind of the beacon or like an old mast, that old tree, like an old mast sticking up there. Shipwreck, life shipwreck. And if you don't follow God and if you don't take his blessings, you will shipwreck. Your life will wreck. You will have nothing to, to stand for and, and, um, and be used as that beacon. Breath of branches and lonely. Verse 18. And therefore will the Lord wait. Oh, he's got patience. That he may be gracious unto you, and therefore will he be exalted, that he may have mercy upon you. For the Lord is a God of judgment. Blessed are all they 
that wait for him. Now, there's, you might, many would say, oh, that is wonderful. No, no, now listen to it. Blessed are they that wait for him for advice. Blessed are they that wait for him for counsel. Not old dragon do nothing. I mean that count on him, that follow him, that lead him. That, that's, that, that's how you receive your blessings. So there's a condition there. You start not listening to God's word and say, don't, don't say it, don't give me any truth that might be, that might offend me a little bit. Truth is truth, okay, whether it offends or not. I'm going to guarantee you that if God's truth offends you, you're in the wrong. It shouldn't. It, you should be a ready soldier, ready to march for Almighty God. I speak spiritually. It's so much better to be blessed and all you have to do is repent and get back in the way. Or you can be that old stripped branch tree up there showing what it's like to have a shipwrecked life. Nothing. Verse 19. For the people shall dwell in Zion at Jerusalem. It will come to that. Thou shalt weep no more. He will be very gracious unto thee at the voice of thy cry. When he shall hear it, he will answer thee. That's, you know, naturally that's during the millennium. I want to tell you something, and I want to read something to you that instead of that old dry bark tree up there, do you know what you want to be? You want to be a tree planted by waters. Jeremiah said it in Jeremiah chapter 17. Instead of that old shipwrecked scrub, blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. Not man, but the Lord. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when he cometh, and shall, and, um, but her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. And so it is. The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Uh, who can know it? Those that uh, stay with God those that are planted by that water. Do you know what the living water is? The living water is Christ, of course. You do not want to be that old beacon on top of that hill. You do not want that, not at all, uh, as a warning of this is what can happen to you if you don't follow God's advice. You certainly don't need that. Returning to the 30th chapter, uh, of the great book of Isaiah. And we read the next verse, and it reads verse 20. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore. Don't let them be withdrawn. But thine eyes shall see thy teachers. Uh, who is the master teacher? Christ is. You want to always follow him. He, he was the teacher of teachers and the leader of leaders. And uh, we, we are simply disciples of his. That means a one disciplining ourselves in his way, his truth, his way. That way you will never be lonely and don't ever let anybody withdraw you from that. The truth from the master teacher. Do you understand what I'm saying and what this word is saying? Don't withdraw from God's advice. Don't withdraw from God's teaching. Stay in it and be blessed. God will hear you. God will bless you. God will prosper you. Verse 21. And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, this is the way. Walk you in it. When you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left. In other words, um, take thought beforehand. Think beforehand. 
love your father and let our father lead you wherever you may go and lead you how? With his advice, with his scripture, with the advice of his hand and the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life to guide you and direct you to, to as uh, uh, some lady asked the question, where is it written in the scripture that your angel protects you now in this life? And naturally it's Matthew chapter 18, verse 10, that you're, if you be one of God's elect, that is to say, if you follow his plan, if you ask him for advice, when you get in trouble, Matthew 18.10, your angel has the face of God at all times to direct you. So when you hear that voice, turn here, turn there, that is to say the unction. And, uh, and our Father is so precious to us. You know, after all, you are his child. And God does love his children, especially those that try. And certainly you are trying. The master teacher of teachers and he that leads. Take thought beforehand. Plan and follow God's advice. Verse 22. Ye shall defile also the covering of thy graven images of silver. And the ornament of the molten images of gold. Thou shalt cast them away as a minstress cloth. Thou shalt say unto it, Get thee hence, just like you would Satan. You know, those, the, those that try to weave those pillowcases and place them over your hand, that's what they're like. They're filthy. Get rid of them and get into the truth of God's word. If you don't know what I'm talking about, read again in Ezekiel 13. Verse 18 through 20. God does not like people to cover his outreach, saving arms, and his words of advice and direction. He always takes care of his own. And he wants to love us. He wants to lead us. So don't let anybody break that connection between you and our Father. It's called the Holy Spirit. He promised he would send that Spirit. He has sent that Spirit. Don't be void of it. Love, enjoy our Father's presence. All right, bless your heart. You listen a moment, won't you please? The mark of the beast.